So I cover Celgene, and for them, this is a really good deal. Uh, they were facing a big risk on their own from the patent expiry on the biggest drug, Revlimid. And, and essentially, the pricing of that deal takes that risk off the table. We, we were thinking that that deal will settle. Now this is all sitting in, in Bristol's corner. So for the Celgene investors, this is actually a very good opportunity to reduce their risk and, and take some profits early in the year. Uh, Bristol is essentially assuming significant risk here. Their shareholders are asking, why are they doing this? Uh, why are they not waiting? I know. And why don't you think they like it, Ronnie? I know that you said you cover Celgene, but you know, if, if both of them face you know maturing businesses, and this is a combination to try to get at uh, you know the future of pharma, why do you think BMY shareholders are so upset? So, so the reason Bristol management likes this deal is because it offers them two things. First, they have got they are very focused on oncology, especially lung cancer, with their largest drug, Optivo. And what Celgene brings is diversification into the very adjacent area of hematology. So Bristol's oncology, uh, Celgene is hematology, and, and they fit together quite well with actually very little overlap in specific, uh, in specific products, but really good overlap in the logic and the organizations. So they like it for that reason. It also diversifies them from Optivo to a set of other issues. Uh, the biggest problem for, for uh, Bristol shareholders, based on my discussion with them this morning, was the near-term patent decision on Revlimid. A Revlimid, every year of Revlimid is worth about 10% of the enterprise value of, of Celgene. The earliest this product can, can be lost is 2021. Uh, the latest is 2025. And that 40% of valuation difference uh, makes the shareholders of, of Bristol um, very, very nervous. They, they specifically did not buy Celgene for that very reason. Mm -hmm. is, is there a buyer for Gilead? I mean, is there somebody who can buy an $85 billion company at today's current market rate? Because it's trading higher as if perhaps uh, this deal makes it more likely that it will be taken over as well. Yeah, I, I find that hard. Um, there's, yeah. no good, there's no good match for, uh, for them. It'll have to be kind of like a pure financial transaction. And I guess most boards and pharma would ask, you know, what are we bringing to the table that the good people of, of Gilead uh, did not have in their hands uh, to, to make that deal? So I assume that what BMY is, is buying here is a pipeline from, yeah. from um, uh, Celgene, particularly in the CAR-T area. It seems like they paid a very, very rich price and they need some home runs. What if they don't get them? Well, the stock is telling you that, right? Yeah. So, so, so uh, uh, the issue here is that they, they have paid a, a nice price for the pipeline with some assumptions around Revlimid. If it breaks their way, great. If competition in those areas, which are hyper-competitive, yes. uh, ends up overtaking uh, Celgene, then they, would have, then they would have made the wrong decision here. Uh, but this has got two or three years to play out. Uh, there are a lot of smart people in both of those companies that know something about oncology and hematology. And to some extent, they're betting that uh, together they'll be able to, to produce more than the two companies separately. But this is, this is that will, what will take time to pay out.